Senator Pocock. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. I move the motion. The climate wars have left us with a very piecemeal climate policy here in Australia. There are more than 80 different pieces of legislation that relate to energy and various elements of climate policy. Clearly, a price on carbon would be a better way to do this, better for business, better for the environment. Disappointingly, that is politically unpalatable. Uh, so we have to make the most of what we have. Uh, we have to ensure that we empower businesses to seize the opportunities of decarbonisation. We need to build as much certainty as possible and, crucially, as much integrity as possible. Proposed changes to the safeguard mechanism uh, mean that there will be an even greater reliance on carbon offsets. So it's more critical than ever to ensure that the methods to create carbon credits have integrity. Carbon credits are necessary in the hardest to abate sectors. Uh, they also have the uh, potential not only to capture carbon, but also to bring secondary benefits such as land restoration and increased biodiversity. They have the potential to reward land managers across the country for the work that they are doing in caring for and restoring the areas that they live and farm. But carbon offsets are also a high-risk environmental policy instrument. It's easy to create uh, false abatement, to create credits that aren't actually sequestering carbon or avoiding carbon emissions. Uh, and rarely will we have absolute confidence that carbon storage is real, additional and permanent. But we can get pretty close. And we should aim high to make a real impact to reduce the change in our climate. That brings me to the method that uh, I've lodged a disallowance for. And it relates to uh, schedules three and four of the carbon uh, credits methodology termination 2022. Forestry is clearly a valuable uh, an incredibly important contributor to our economy. We should all be grateful uh, to those in the industry who work to create the materials that construct our homes, build our furniture, and countless other valuable things. We do need to incentivise and encourage tree planting and the plantation forest industry to keep, um, to keep up with demand. As it is key uh, to many in our communities and our economy, and it will be there for many years to come. And to that end, the first two schedules of the plantation forestry method are not pro problematic. They uh, appear sound, and in consultations, uh, experts in this field are happy with, with the way that they have been uh, constructed. They provide credits for establishing new plantations to store carbon and for, for converting short rotation plantations to long rotation plantations. Trees are obviously a good way to store carbon and we'll need them if we're going to effectively address the climate crisis. However, I am concerned that projects under schedules three and four would not provide additional carbon storage. Uh, the recent Chubb review considered just three methods used to create carbon credits and in that review, Professor Chubb recommended that no new projects should be registered under the avoided deforestation method. Uh, the Chubb review did not consider the plantation forestry method. Uh, however, schedules three and four of the method are remarkably similar to the method that his review suggested uh, be not continued with. Uh, there are clear shortcomings, and I remain concerned that under these schedules credits would be given not to clear land uh, that would never have actually been cleared and we have to have uh, integrity in this market. If we allow these sorts of credits uh, to be created, they, they cast 
uh, doubt and uncertainty on, on all of the great high integrity credits out there. So I really urge senators in this place to disallow these two methods uh, and to add to the integrity of our carbon credit market. Thank you.